What did you think about that run? That was a good solid two horsepower, a little over on the top, down the backside, even better up top. And all that really was, was switching from the stock head insert, which was running 205 PSI, down here at 100 feet above sea level, to a lower compression head insert that we made, changed the angle slightly, that helped, and that took the compression down to 185, you see here on the gauge. Now there were a few other changes. I did use my sanded piston, fit at 3,000th clearance. My oil was now 50 to 1 instead of 60 to 1. And this intake window was cut just slightly bigger on these, so it breathes just a little better. Also, the base gasket stack was 45 thousandths when it went in there. And I used two gaskets that come out of our gasket kit, and I write 300 on the two that you would put together to get that 45 thousandths clearance. That basically makes your squish band clearance starting at 90 thousandths of an inch, and then with the new head insert, it grows a little bit bigger because this angle has changed slightly, but that's it. Now, to just back up where I was at, because there was a few other things going on, I had that deal going and I put the stock head insert back in to get the compression back up to the 205 and let's see where that fell into place. So a little bit better than it was, which would be because of the piston stuff, mainly. Oil, maybe a little bit, but probably the piston cutting there with the fresh top end. Now there's a lot of little caveats going on, caveats, however you want to say it. There's a lot of little things going on with this deal. One of the things that I think is really important is looking at this piston after we took the top end off. Now when you saw that pick, you didn't see the blow-by lines like you saw in a few of the previous videos when the compression was high and you saw the blow-by go past the first ring and the second ring. This dude is clean, not even past the first ring, and that's after 10 hard runs at that 60 to 61 horsepower. It's been taxed, but now that the compression is lower, the heat is under control, and we don't have the issues anymore. So, lower down to go faster. Let's look at this just a little closer. Now this was pure tit for tat, just changing back. So as you can see, zero loss on anything on the bottom. Now again, this is wide open throttle, of course, but it's still a hell of a gain up here on top. That is free power, my friends. A 92 octane pump gas. We have a few other things to discuss, I think. So one of the questions that comes to my mind was, is running compression really even less? The static compression might be less, but when we had a higher compression before, you saw, you would see the blow-by pass the first and second ring. Uh, second ring is a concern because things really aren't being captured on both exhaust port sides, so your running compression is much higher than your static compression to that point. It couldn't handle it, and compression was leaking by. So what was being captured to make power was less. Now that on this new piston where I showed you it's clean, it's capturing all that stuff, and that could be a very key reason why it's making power. Even though running comp static compression is less, running compression could have gone up. That's a good question to ask. Obviously, the heat's gonna be under control. Getting rid of the coolant tube with the thermostat in it, open coolant tube, lowering this. These were all runs on 92 octane shell, V-Premium uh, shell, V-Power gas, 
and my boil at 51. So keep all that in mind. It was also based on the fact that you had a 45,000 space gasket stack. I have these, this gasket kit that comes with the bike. There's two gaskets in there. I usually mark the two, right? 300 on the ones that you should stack together to get your proper squish band. Height, that's facing the cylinder correctly. Of course, your compression is based off of that as well. That will give you the 2.3 millimeters of squish band clearance called for the manual, which is basically 90,000 sub an inch. And the two gaskets that come with it. One's a rubber coated little guy. And it is hmm, 26 thousandths. And then you've got your other guy at 11 thousandths, 12 thousandths, depending on how you measure it. So, you know, it's pretty simple. Okay, well, the last thing to know is, um, so the lower compression insert works great. Basically, you're shooting for the range of 180 to 190 PSI. This works great from zero to 4,000 feet. From five to 7,000 feet, I would just use the stock insert. You can check your compression and see where it's at, but I think you'll find that it falls in a range when your base gasket stack is correct. And then from after seven, I did make a slightly higher compression insert. You know, the things are only 79.95. You don't need to spend a bunch of money to get this stuff sorted out. You can buy two inserts for the cost of what other people are charging for one. And between your stock insert, man, you're covered between sea level to 11,000 feet. So after 7,000 feet, I would put this slightly higher one in it. At that point, you could also even take one base gasket out, lower some port timing if you're looking for bottom end. A lot of things you can do. So I think you're good. Base gaskets, pistons, squish back clearance, those top of the piston to the top of the head, just in case you didn't know what it was. There's your two rings, there's a cute little spark plug. So it's simple. Well, look, thanks for watching. Hope you have a real nice day. And what am I gonna do next? Next, I have eight sets of new reeds that came in from my friend that works at the Mercury Outboard Racing Place that makes me reeds to try. I have a whole bunch of them to try on this bike. I think I've got it narrowed down, but we're going to see what it does. Later.